it up, slide it up. Welcome to Adobe Animate, and we're just going to create techniques for working with symbols and functional style animation. So what I'm going to do is just show you how this file looks in its final form, and then we're going to go through from creating it from Illustrator or Illustrator file into the program and then adding the animation to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go under Control here and just go down and test, just so you can see what it looks like. So here's our file, it's just a 800 by 600 or 600 deep by 800 wide and we've just got three sorts of graphics here. One at the top here is simply just a shape morphing effect. The next one started off a bitmap or a um, image, just a graphic like the top one but then it was turned into a graphic symbol and then the next one here is working with a movie clip symbol we can add it its own timeline. So how do you put that together? Well let's go through and build it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close my animate here. We're going to open it from scratch and um, just closing that one and then I'm going to go through and build a new file directly from Illustrator. Okay just before we begin here, now we don't want this file, it does actually make a Swift file but it's not really relevant anymore so if I can just drag that and I can get that into the trash but essentially I just want to show you a little bit of functional animation so this is really important having animation if I click on this file here and open it up rather than just having a straight button you can actually create a little bit more interest and psychology maybe if I go to this one it's a quite a cool download so rather than just something that's boring, it can be far more exciting just as people wait for their file to work. In that case, failing wasn't probably the best one. Um, anyway, so let's go through and without further ado, I'm just going to open up my file here, which is an AI file. So if I just open this up, up and which is an Illustrator file. So on the Illustrator file, what I want to do is I'm just in my setup here under Windows and in the windows we can have workspaces I'm just on a web one at the moment but um, really it really doesn't matter what you want the main thing is what I want to check out is just my layers so as long as you can see layers and there's my layers here which actually just show um, layer one two three which is actually where each of the graphics are now what I want to do is there's a mistake here and this is going to run into a problems. So, so make sure that you actually do work out the right layers because it's going to make life a little bit easier when you get into Adobe Animate. And by that I mean if I just turn everything off here, including my um, background file, what I've got is a blank button 3 and I've got this file here, which is just a simple circle, ellipse tool. Um, and it's on the same layer as the slider. Now that's going to cause a few problems. Rather than have to solve it later, I'm just going to go um, Edit Cut. So Command X, just I'm on a Mac, and I'm just going to come down here and just go File, Paste in Place. So if that layer was uh, locked, no it's not, you're attempting to place and drag something which are locked or hidden. I'm just going to go OK. I'm not sure why it said that, because I don't seem to have any locked files. Remember you lock your files here. Anyway, um, I'm turning all these back on, and um, now they're all in the right format, so if I just deselect that, we can just make sure that background, the slider effect I want, and then each of these buttons. So I'm just going to make sure I just save this now. And I might save it into the latest format. So we've got our Illustrator files sorted. What I want to do now is I'm just going to open up um, Flash, which is Adobe Animate. And of course, it's now working with a more um, modern context, not with Swift files, but of course, working with what we want to go to HTML5 and all sorts of other uses. And particularly in this case, I'm just creating this animation effect. So I'm just going to open my Adobe Animate up here. So there it is, Adobe Animate opening up. Um, it's just the latest version. And here it comes. Okay, so what I want to do with this is I basically um, want to create a new file. 
Now, if we just have a look around the top here, here's different formats for banners and all sorts of different things you might want to do. Maybe I'm just going to click on more presets and just see what comes up with that. So here I can go into social media and it actually gives you the sizes of a whole range of different formats. So make it easy on yourself. Now down here you can also look at doing more advanced animation. We're just looking at the principles of just putting some classic um, images together. And it only gets better the more you get into it. Okay, well really it doesn't matter what I've got here. I might go to um, any format I want. But what I want to do is create something that I based on my original Illustrator file. So that was 800 pixels. Now I'm working with pixels simply because that's really what we're working with on screen. So just 800 by 600 height pixels, and I'm going to work with a frame rate of 30. I want it nice and smooth, but just also make it easy for my math. So let's go and create that. So as we go through here, it's just loading up, and there's my file. Nothing on the time frame here. So, of course, what I might want to do is I'm just going to go and I'm going to um, save this. Might as well do it right from the beginning. And I'm just going to call this slider. Just so, well, that's basically what I'm working with here. And it's just a flower file, a flash file, and just save it in there. So, instead of having to build everything up we've done a lot of work in illustrator already and we can just go file and we can go import i'm going to import straight to the stage i want to bring all my assets to the stage all in the timeline so i've got them easily available to work with so i'm going to go import from here and i'm going to come through and just locate the file i want which is basically my flash dial ai file here and so i can just click on this and I'm just going to go and open it up, and it should come in. Well, before it comes in, we have to say how we want it to come in. So I was just going onto that main artboard, and I've got all my layers here, and I want it to come in all the layers, and I want to just place the objects at the original position. Remember, I've already worked out that it's the right stage size. So nothing really to do except go import for this one. And there you go. We've got everything labeled up, and we've got all our graphics all good to go at the stage and um, now we're just going to start building in our timeline and create the animation okay let's get this first graphic on the road here so what i'm on at the moment in fact i've got this sort of selected if i click over here um, basically i've just selected layer um, one or the button one and if i double click on this you see that it's sort of gone into its drawing object and just a natural way it's sort of come through from Illustrator. But I just want to come back out to the outer side here. Now what I want to do is for this first one, I just want to totally break it apart. Now a good way to break it apart is we just go to modify and we can go break apart or just go B. Either way, just go and break that apart. And now it doesn't go in any further. It's right on the outer edge. It's just a straight graphic. With this first graphic, we're just going to work along with the timeline. And seeing we were working at 30 frames per second, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just come down and I just want to click with my uh, left mouse button or my Wacom pen, but simply just drag down because I just want to change and just add some extra space in this timeline because at the moment we can't move anywhere. So let's go through and just do that again. Now I can control click on this and it will come up with a menu. Uh, and basically what I want to do is I just want to insert frame and I can just go with F5. That's another way of doing it. Or I can just come up to and insert right at the top here, timeline, and just go frame. Not keyframe, just frame. And I'll just plonk that in there. Now we've got the slider that can slide through here. But we don't want to just make extra keyframes at this stage because we want to keep them in the right format. So on this first frame here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click right down here and basically just the end frame. And maybe instead of having to go up here and just insert everything at, at each stage in the timeline, which is basically I want a keyframe, um, we can actually just control click on it. So I've actually clicked on that. So I've actually put one in here, but I've got 
an extra frame at the end here. So what I'm going to do with this one that's already highlighted, I'm going to hold or start dragging it and just hold my shift key and take it right through to the other side and just sort of line it up here. And just get it nicely positioned so I'm happy with it. And there you go. But if I just go off here, you see it's two different parts of the timeline. What we want to do with this one is we're going to do what's called a shape tween. We're going to do the tweening between these two keyframes. Tweening is the in-betweening of what it takes to give the illusion of the animation. So you've got two distinct keyframes and all the rest will be making that illusion happen. In this case, pretty simple with just a straight shape, but nonetheless, let's go and do that. Now we can add a few other graphics and things like, um, or effects in here, but just to get everything going first, I'm just gonna go through and make nice and simple, just working on a good way of doing this. I'm just going to click on this timeline here and I'm going to put um, a animation tween in here. So if we go into Cert, go to uh, basically up to the, the top group of animation things here. And the two we're working with today is just classic tween. This won't work, of course, in this one, but we're working with a shape tween. That's what we want for right now. And I'm going to click on this one. So now you can see everything's moving through there, but there's only two key frames to work with. So let's go to frame 30 here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to now just go control click on here and just insert another keyframe. And with this keyframe, I can go through and do things like if I just click on this, you watch what happens over this side. It's basically in this properties and I can click on say a color now and go to another color. So if we now slide it, we can see that we're actually not really changing the shape, but we are changing the color. Well, let's actually change the shape. So I'm gonna click right on this one, which is on the keyframe and just go delete. And I'm gonna come back over here and I'm just gonna grab a different shape and just plonk it out like so. And you see what's happened to the timeline just down the bottom here. If I go all the way down there, there's that timeline all dotty, not what we want. So what I'm gonna do is just gonna click that in like so. And as soon as I let that go, oh, suddenly it seems to be working again, but this time we're shape tweening it. Pretty simple, eh? Now you can do some really cool things for putting animation together, creating the illusion of 3D, all sorts of things. But what I'm going to come up to do now is I'm just going to click on that same keyframe here and I'm going to delete it once more. And I'm going to go and get some type. Now, it needs to be a broken apart graphic, but type certainly not that, but let's just go and have a go. So if I click on some type and I'm just going to click that to add some type in here and I'll do something that's, uh, let's see, whatever typeface you want. I'm just going to stay with Rockwell and just go, uh, oops, just go rock well once again and um, so you can actually start typing there or roboto that could be quite good um, nonetheless rock well so I'm just going to choose that one okay and just type in well let's say I'm going to go a cap I've got cap and I'm just going to type in s now you could have bold or whatever but I'm just going to bring it down and bring it into the place I want I could actually resize it and just by highlighting it um, and do, or changing it to another font, but I just want to keep it like so. Now this won't work. See what's happening with the timeline, the stotty effect. So what you have to do is break it apart. So you guessed it, just Command B and or modify break apart and it should do the same thing. Now you really just want to use with one graphic or one letter um, so you can control all of this. But as soon as I um, click outside of that, you should see, oh, my timeline works now. So what does that look like? So it's actually not going too bad here, and we're going to colors and shapes. But what I wanna do is go all the way back to the beginning here, because I want more control of this. So I'm gonna come up to um, what's called shape hints. So you'll see what happens here. I'm gonna go modify and go all the way down to shape, and then I want to basically add shape hint. Okay, so why isn't that shape hint coming in? So let's just go back and just make sure that we're on that keyframe and just go insert, uh, sorry, modify, shape, and then just now we can set shape hint. Now what happens with the shape hint is you have to decide where you want to put it somewhere on the first graphic and then grab it over and it goes between two frames. So if we're going to go from the middle to the end, we'd have to do another one in the middle and to the end. So let's maybe let's try that. So I'm just going to bring this out here and you see it sort of highlights. And now I've got 
better shape effects. Now just to show you that could go crazy if I put it somewhere else and it's going to change the shape which I don't want at all. I liked it up here. So what you actually, actually basically need to do is then we can um, go through and put another shape in and then go out to the end here. So while we're in the middle let's go and do that. So I'm just going to go um, modify, shape and go shape hint. And now this is for this one, which I'm going to take over to this side. And as I take it right through this keyframe, there it is at the end. So I can actually start changing that to get whatever I want. Even one animation might be quite different to the other one. So that's just basically putting together shape hints. Of course, what I better do is just go and save that. So that's the first part of putting this together, just using a simple shape tween, working with straight broken apart graphics. Okay, once again, we're going to get on to our, now to uh, button two, just down here. So there it is, button two. Now, the same thing here is we don't want to, if I double click on it, we don't want to go in. We just want to actually convert that to a graphic, uh, much easier to work with. So there's no extra um, grouped elements. It's just nice and clean and pure. So I'm just going to double, well, actually not double click on it, just go from the scene out here and just you guessed it I go up to modify or just break apart command B so we've got our first graphic there now of course I'm not going to use the same form and put this uh, keyframe at the other end not just yet anyway we're now going to convert this into a symbol so what we can do if I come up to uh, basically modify here I can go to convert to symbol I can actually just as easily come over to this hand side and you see this little symbol icon. I'm going to click on that while it's selected. Now the first symbol I want to use is not a button. This is where we can have uh, actions off that. We're not doing any actions on this example, just working with some classic animation. I'm going to go to graphic. Now when you actually name your graphic, use a standard naming convention. So I'm just going to go GR and that means graphic. And let's see, I'm going to use what's called um, hmm, uh, camel casing. Okay, so I'm just going to go uh, blue um, circle, blue ball, that's better. So camel casing essentially is just the first lowercase word and then to the new word, rather than having a dash or wasting any spaces, or certainly don't want to have a, a space in there, um, and rather than using a dash or an underscore, we're just going to camel case it being a capital letter. So lowercase, capital letter to indicate the new word, camel casing. Okay, so that's a graphic now, and I'm going to go OK. Now one thing that's happened with this, if I just come up to the top here and I click on library, we now have a symbol in there. And there it is, there's a symbol graphic, and it's a symbol. So let's go back to properties here. Okay, so now I've got this file in place. What I'm going to do is, you guess it, I'm going to take this all the way through to the end. And just here, I'm now going to convert this, this to a symbol. So I'm just going to use my control key, being on a Mac, and then I can just go insert keyframe. And there it is. And it's the same symbol. So I want to play around with some animation now. So I'm going to go control, click in the middle here. And we can't use shape tween animation. It's no longer shape tween. We can use frame by frame and break it up you know and here's all the indication here but there's no, nothing really in there at the moment but um, it's one way of doing some tweening and then if you want to do some crazy stuff with individual frame by frame uh, but we don't want to do that we just want to go and do a good classic tween not going to use a motion tween I um, just want to use create classic tween okay so there you go so of course it's not going to move yet because it, this first one last one don't go anywhere so I'm now just going to click on that and just drag it across. And I'm going to hold my shift key just to constrain it. Okay, there you go. So there you go, just there. So what I want to do now is just have some fun with this one. So right in the center, I'm going to use Control, click, and go Insert Keyframe. And with this one, now I'm going to move it up to the top there. That's better. And maybe here at about 15. I'm going to do another keyframe, control, click, and insert keyframe. 
and this one I'm going to drag down to here. And let's see, we'll do just one more. And I'm going to click, say, about 45, just to keep it nice and even all the way through. Control, click, insert keyframe, and just drag this one down to the bottom here. Okay, so there you go. If I come back and just play that one now, and let's see how that goes. I'm going to just click on the play. There you go, so we've got a bit of movement there. Now things like um, easing in, easing out, is obviously things you need to get into to really make the animation sort of more natural, etc. But really just this first video is just looking at working with the main elements and the main two symbols, graphics and movie clips, and of course just your shape tweening. So that's putting together the second one. So the next one we're going to do a movie clip. With the movie clip, before I get into that, I think an important thing to do is just come up here and just file save to make sure everything's okay. And in case something goes wrong, keep it saved all the time. Now I'm going to come down to my button number three. Now, one thing, just like when we created our initial graphics as a user interface type style from Illustrator and brought it through, we put everything on layers. So that's what it needs to be. So if things don't work or get mixed up, we've got different things or more things on the one layer. So I'm just going to not worry about that because we've already set it up correctly when we brought it in. Let's go back to our graphic here. So an indication if you've got other things on that layer, when you go Command B or Modify Break Apart here, Sometimes it disappears because it's trying to mix up with the other layer or something like that. But we know that worked because it has worked, simply. Okay, let's go and get it into our, our next symbol. And that is, you guessed it. Um, now, I can't see my stuff over here um, in order to put things in place. So I'm just going to go and click it again and watch what happens. Click it there. And just under the object, we can now go and create convert to symbol. Of course, we can do that up there as well. So Convert to symbol and graphic. No, 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 no. We're going to come down here or up here to movie clip. Now, naming convention for movie clip is just MC underscore. Okay. And let's call this uh, green ball. Oh, not. Um, better spell that right. Green ball and put it in there. And that'll be fine, camel case to remember. Green, ball, even though it might change a few colors, that'll be a starter one. And I'm gonna go okay. And if I come over here to my assets, or well not assets, but libraries, there it is, we got two different graphics. Now you see the icons here, one is a graphic, one is a movie clip. Now movie clips, you won't see everything. It's like what we started off right at the beginning. You need to do a test movie or render it to a video file. Uh, but um, nonetheless, it gives you ability to have inserted, nested uh, timelines. So what do I mean by that? Okay, now before I start, I'm worrying about putting anything through here. Now I could do that at any stage, it really doesn't matter. But what I'm going to do is, once again, I'm just going to turn it into the normal graphic. So Command B, okay? And there it is, just a graphic. But um, with this one, okay? is that I've actually converted that and I've actually destroyed it. Okay, so what have I done here? Is that I've converted a movie clip back to just a graphic on screen. So that was a bit annoying, wasn't it? Because I can, at any stage, break things apart. No problem. So I'm just gonna come back to my graphic here because we've got these as basically library items. So I can just come down here and just drag that back in there. See the plus? And I'll just plonk it where I want it to go. Okay. And you can use your arrow keys if you just want to line it up, just get it precise. So there you go. In fact, the same with the graphic. You have that stored as a basically a library symbol and you can use it again. It's only an instant on screen. When you break it apart, you create a whole different graphic again. So just be a little bit wary of doing that, but nonetheless, you're sorted either way. So now we can go through and I can put in my um, basically keyframe at this end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and do that. And now I don't have to do it this 
um, this way and basically doing it now. I can do it later because I want to do some extra graphics or extra effects timelines with this movie clip symbol. So it really doesn't matter when I do it, but I'm just going to do it this way. So I click here, there's my timeline, and I'm just going to go control click this time and insert keyframe. Now I'm also going to come along here and I'm going to put in the same classic tween again. So just basically click on that and we just want to do classic tween. Okay. And of course with this end one, I'm now just going to drag that through to the end as well. Hold my shift key, just constrain it. And basically just like the graphic symbol, there it goes. It's just no animation put in there. We could do the same things as we did the graphic, but we're going to do a little bit extra. And what is that? Well, all I need to do is, in fact, I can do it from here or anywhere along here because this is just a symbol of the same graphic. So I could click it here and it's going to change it as well, But so it doesn't matter where I do it. But while I'm in here, I'm now going to double click. Remember what happened? We went into a group before. Now I'm going to double click on it. There it is. There's a graphic and we've gone in but it's actually gone into the movie clip itself. And watch this down here, it's another timeline. Just to have a little bit of fun, what I'm gonna do is, a little bit like when we did that first graphic up the top, I'm just going to go uh, Control click here. I just wanna keep it to mathematically work with the 60, so after 60 is 30, and I'm just gonna go Insert, not Insert Frame, Insert Key Frame. And with this one, I think I might still just go do my classic type tween, but it'll be a shape tween because this is a shape. Now what we could have is a graphic within here and then the shape tween within that. So it gets nested and nested, so it goes deeper and deeper and deeper and you'd actually get three things along here. But just wanna keep this nice and simple, just the principle. So let's go back here and I'm just going to click on this and of course we get our shape tween back, which is what I want. So create shape tween. So nothing's happening here. Okay, because it's because it's just the same graphic, two keyframes. Now I don't want to animate this one, I just want to do a shape change because we've already got an animation in our master scene timeline. So what I mean by that is I'm just going to come right in the middle, just click on 15, and I'm going to just click in there and go insert one more keyframe. Now with that, now I could swap out another graphic, do whatever I want. Um, and I'm simply going to, with this one, I'm going to come up to this transform tool. And I'm going to just transform it, just have a bit more fun with it. Just to definitely show it's a different shape. I could use a whole different shape like we did at the top, but I just want to keep that a little bit easier. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back to my pointer tool and I just want to come back to my properties here. I'm just going to change this color just so it's definitely changing in some respects. So let's see what happens when we take this through. Great. Okay, so let's go out to our timeline again, right to the end, and let's see what's happening when we go and animate this. So I'll just click through and there's our stuff changing. But what happened with this one? So if you remember right at the start, I'll just take it all the way back to the start here. When we're working with movie clips, the only way to see them is render them out to um, a video file, or it could be a ping sequence, but a video type format, which actually goes through media encoder. Uh, or um, basically what we can do is just come up here just to see anything at any stage. So control here, and I'm just going to come down and just going to go test, and that's the way to just test it. Let's see what's happening there, and see our stuff is changing like so. But hold it, didn't we do some other cool things with the timeline? Yes, we did. What we're going to do is now put a motion path in here. So what do I mean a motion path? So I want you to hold the control key and just come down on your button three here. So button three, click on that. And let's see what's in here. Right down the bottom, just see it below the guide, we're putting in this classic motion guide, if you will. Not guide, but add classic motion guide. And then it creates this extra graphic here. So I'm just going to click on that graphic. And I'm going to come down here. You could use your pencil tool or something like that. But 
I do one, I want to really control it here. It's just the pen tool. So just the normal pen tool. And right at the beginning, when we created everything, it actually did a registration, um, which was actually still right in the center. So I'm going to start off with the center. Center by default, usually. And anyway, I'm going to go and just go and make some cool shapes. I might go way up here. And I'm going to come back to where I really think the center is going to be just there. Uh, now that wasn't perfect, so let's see what can I do with this one. I might just hold it down here and go to my selection tool here, or sub-selection tool. And essentially we can go through, oops, don't want to move the wrong thing. Now by the way, if that happens, maybe I can lock these as well. So I don't want to click on that, I just want to click on this point. Um, making sure that my button 3 is on the guide here. And there it is. And then I could just go and just move my handle up just to make it line up nicely. Wow, that's looking pretty cool. Well, let's see if it is or not. So what I need to do is I'm going to come back to my pointer tool now and just the selection tool or V. And I just need to make sure that this snaps into the middle there. See that snap? That looks really good already. Let's go to the end. I might have actually just done it. Oh, look at that. It's already working. So what you do is you start and you go to the end version here and just make sure that snaps in just there. So that's looking pretty good with the motion path because we don't want it to be obvious. So we're just going to come down here and just turn that off. I'm going to go once again and I'm going to save this and I'm going to see what it really looks like. Actually, I'll just do a normal view. That's cool. Now if we render it as a, a GIF animation, that's what you're going to see. You're not going to see anything above that. So that's why it's good to render GIF type stuff as just um, using graphics really. Movie clips, you need that extra output. But let's go and test it. So just control and I'm going to come and just go test once more. And now we can see everything rolling around with all its um, inserted nested timeline and all the graphics going together. So, just finally, once you do your final save here, or just save, that's great. Then you can go, if you want to render it out, this is going to go through Media Encoder. So, if we just come down to Export here, and we just want to go Export Video Media, and maybe just a H.264 and just an MP4 is ideal. Or, um, if we just want to render it as a GIF, we can just come here and render it as a GIF. So, Media Encoder will sort of take care of it. You can choose any format you want. Just really for this thing, it sort of will open up nice and quick. I'm just going to click on my media encoder. There it goes through here. And just so you see what's going on here, I'm just going to bring the whole thing in. Now with a GIF animation that you might want to be adding to your sort of dummy or setup interface, etc. Um, you basically can actually even play around with um, your colors. And with the outer edge, you can put a mat on the edge, just like normal web type stuff with GIFs, etc. But, and you can also uh, limit your colors as well. So 256 at the moment. Now, what we want is this just to loop forever. We could do a test from here, but rather than that, I'm just gonna go save now, and should be saving to the file there. I'm just gonna save it in slider GIF, and certainly don't want a, a Swift, but it's sort of doing something like that anyway, But You'll see that should save there in just a minute. And let's just minimize that. Let's minimize our Illustrator file. And we should have, there it is just here. And I just open that up to just see how that works. And a great GIF animation, but you will notice the GIF, of course, is not showing that middle section there. So really, that's just a, a getting your head around um, some of the key things in basically Adobe Animate, it's sort of the classic ways of working. Now there's lots of stuff that goes on there and lots of refinement you can do, but just initially to get some really cool graphics out and understand the principles of symbols, um, that should give you a good start to go deeper with it. So thank you for watching.